Here are 30 settings you should change on your iPad today that really make a difference. From customizing your dock and app library to using four and five finger gestures, special commands for swiping from the corner, Apple Pencil specific settings, and more. For more iPhone and iPad tips, hit subscribe. And yes, I'm seeing Dune later today. One of the first settings I change on all my iPads is where new apps are downloaded. If I go to the Settings app and then scroll down to Home Screen and App Library, here you can specify when new apps download to add it to your home screen or only add it to the app library. I customize all my Apple devices with lots of widgets, and typically when a new app is added, it'll mess up your home screen layouts. So I have all of my apps go directly to the app library. This way it never rearranges my home screens until I place it there. So rather than add to home screen for new apps, I choose app library only. Speaking of apps that randomly appear, if you notice that when you download apps on your iPhone or other Apple devices, they automatically show up on your iPad, you can actually change that in the app store settings on your iPad, scroll down to app downloads and toggle this off. That means when you download a new app on your iPhone or other iPads, it won't automatically appear on this device. Going back up to the home screen and app library, you can customize the app icons on your iPad and make them larger. Here's what normal size app icons look like. This is an iPad mini for reference. And if I turn large app icons on, you can see they get way bigger. I like a little more breathing room on my home screen, but if you wanna make those larger, you can do that here in the settings. Also, you can customize what appears in your dock here. That app library I was talking about, if you toggle it on, you can have the app library always in the dock. This way it's easy to access all your apps, especially for split view or slide over. But if you don't want that, you can toggle the app library off in the dock. And the fifth setting, I toggle off the show suggested and recent apps in the dock. When this is on, it'll show any apps that you might use recently. Say I go to Safari and maybe I'll open Ferrite because I'm editing a podcast. You can see when I slide the dock up, it's actually showing settings here on the right side of this bar. These are recent apps that you've used. If you like that there, great, but I like to be particular in what apps appear in the dock. And so you can toggle off those show suggested and recent here, then you won't see those anymore on the right side of the dock. Going back into the settings, for the app library, you can toggle off notification badges for that view. So the app library, I usually get to it by swiping to the right, and then I have all my apps. But I don't like to see notification badges here, especially on my iPad. I usually have most notifications go off on my iPhone. So you can toggle off those badges right here. Next, going down to multitasking and gestures, you can actually enable or disable the split screen and slide over. So let's say we turn this off. Now, when I'm in an app, let's say like Safari, and I wanna bring in Ferrite, if I try to drag it up, it's not gonna do split screen or slide over. But if you wanna use those multitasking gestures, make sure to select this option. And now when you're in something like Safari, I can drag another app from my dock, slide it over, and now I have that split screen view. You can tap and hold on that middle bar, change it to a one third, two third. You can also choose to launch apps from the search bar. Let's say I wanna split view files. I can actually tap and hold on the files app here in the spotlight results, swipe up to go home, and now let go. And now I'm split screening the Files app and Safari. So you don't necessarily need the app library here in the dock. You can do that from Spotlight. So if we go back into settings, number eight is starting picture in picture automatically. This might be on by default, but if not, now that picture in picture is automatically enabled, let's say I'm watching something in the Apple TV app. Now when I swipe up to go home, it's automatically going to go into picture in picture mode. Then I can drag the picture in picture around. I can even pinch and zoom to make it larger or smaller. That's as large as it gets on the iPad mini. And if I wanna go back into the app, I can just tap this symbol right here on the video. Side note, it's still kind of wild that settings itself doesn't offer split view. If you try to do a split view with something like Safari, it just refuses. It'll do slide over, but it won't do the split view where it splits the screen 50-50. Maybe settings will finally properly split view in iPad OS 18. Number nine, if you scroll down on the same settings page for multitasking and gestures, you'll see productivity gestures. You definitely wanna to toggle this on. This enables three finger gestures for undo, copy, and paste. Let's say you were writing something and you accidentally delete it. You can now take three fingers and swipe right to left and it will undo that last action. I could also choose to copy or paste what's selected by three finger pinching in that copied it. And if I three finger pinch out, I can paste. This also works for images. Let's say I copied an image here and I wanna paste it in this note. I can actually do a three finger pinch out and it will paste that image right there. And this works with the iCloud clipboard so you can copy and paste across devices. And number 10, underneath that is four and five finger gestures. I honestly love these gestures. You can swipe from one app to another with a four finger swipe left to right. I do this all the time on my iPads. You can go home with a five finger pinch in, go right to the home screen like that. And you can show the app library quickly if you pinch in with four and five fingers and swipe up. Five finger pinch in to go home, 
but really what I find most useful is that four finger swipe between apps. Now underneath that, I showed you the three finger swipe to undo, but if you want to violently shake your iPad, you can enable that to undo as well. And number 12, swiping from the corner. This was a feature I believe in iPad OS 16. So if I wanted to take a screenshot or create a quick note, I can program that to the left or right corner. And then when I swipe up from those corners, it will start creating that quick note or take a screenshot. You can also change how it's programmed. So now left corner is a quick note and a right bottom corner is a screenshot. Those are kind of convenient, but I actually found myself accidentally doing this all the time. So I actually disable the swipe finger from corner. There's actually another option to do that with the Apple Pencil, which I'll show you in a second. But if you do want to keep that on and try it, tip or setting number 13, I would recommend is whatever corner you hold it most often from, turn that corner off for that swiping from corner, and then only turn on the corner that you rarely hold or one that you have to intentionally swipe from. All right, for number 14, we're going to go to display and brightness. And if we scroll down, at the very bottom, there's a toggle for lock, unlock with cover. So if you're using one of Apple smart covers or one that has the built-in magnets, you can choose whether or not this puts your iPad to sleep. With that toggled on, I can actually close my cover and now the iPad's asleep. And when I open it, you'll see I actually have to unlock it. If you would prefer not for that to put your iPad to sleep, you can toggle that off. And now when I put the cover on, it's actually still awake, didn't go to sleep. I actually have my iPad auto lock on 15 minutes. And the main reason is I run a lot of shortcuts that unless the screen is on the whole time, they'll time out. And so rather than have my iPhone try to run those, and some of them don't run on the Mac, I keep my iPad auto lock on 15 minutes, but I keep this toggled on. So when I close the cover, I know my iPad's asleep. All right, for number 15, we're gonna go to the accessibility settings. And if we scroll down, you'll see top button and touch ID. This is gonna be on iPad mini, iPad Air with touch ID, and the new base model iPad. Here you can actually change the double click speed necessary to purchase apps or do other confirmations. If you find it difficult to double tap it at the speed required, you can actually go to slow or slowest changing that double tap speed. And I find this setting particularly useful. I keep this on, which is rest finger to open. That means when the iPad is locked, I can just rest my finger on the touch ID button and it will automatically go to the home screen if I just hold my finger there. If I toggle this off, now when I lock my iPad, I can click the button, keep my finger there to unlock it, but it'll stay on the lock screen. If you have more notifications that you like to manage here, then maybe toggle that setting off. But for me, I actually like having it go directly to the home screen so I keep that toggled on and I can click, hold my finger there and I'm home. All right, number 17, this is a setting you manage on your iPhone, but actually affects all your Apple devices. If you like having your iMessages everywhere, I would go to the settings app on your iPhone, go down to messages, then scroll down to where it says text message forwarding. This setting is only viewable on your iPhone. And when you tap that, this will show you all the devices where text messages will forward. I wanna manage my messages with whatever Apple device I have with me. And what this does is send SMS text messages like from an Android device to all your Apple devices so you can respond. I have this enabled for Apple Vision Pro, my M3 MacBook Pro, my iPad mini, which I was just on, and my Mac Studio. I actually disable this though for a Mac mini that I have in a closet that I use for more server related tasks. So this helps you choose which devices will get those text message forwarding and I turn my iPad on. This way I can manage all my texts from there. All right, back on the iPad, if we go to settings, all right, staying in the accessibility settings, if you scroll down, you'll see Siri as an option, and there's a toggle here to type to Siri. This way, if you wanna be able to type instead of speaking your request to Siri, toggle that on, then you can hold the button, and now I can just type to Siri like it's a chat bot. I can ask it questions like, what's the weather today? And now it's not gonna speak to me, it'll just show me the result. Really helpful if you're just in a place where you don't want Siri speaking out loud and maybe you don't have headphones, or maybe it frequently misunderstands you and you just wanna be able to type your requests. You can enable that here in the accessibility Siri settings. Also, one other Siri setting that I change is under Siri and search, not accessibility, just the main Siri settings. You can go to the listen for section, and I typically turn this off for multiple devices. I have lots of HomePods around the house, and sometimes the iPad or the iPhone will take over when I really just wanted it to be a HomePod. I actually turn this off on my phone too and just leave it enabled for my watch. So if I'm anywhere in the house, I know my HomePods will hear me, and if I'm out, I just use my watch. All right, number 20. This is a setting available both on iPhone and iPad, but if you go to spoken content, you can enable things like speak selection, and setting 21 is speak screen. If I toggle both of these on, now when I'm in a note or anywhere where I can select text, I can actually highlight the text and now there's a new speak option in this contextual menu. I can tap it Writing. and it will speak whatever I selected. This also works on things like web pages. If you select text, 
Or if you want it to speak everything that's on the screen, I can actually swipe down with two fingers and it will just start talking. The new year has brought huge tech news across the entire industry. Maybe you're in the car and rather hear a news article rather than read it. Well, now you can swipe down with two fingers and just hear it. Our number 22, Personal Voice, which was a setting that launched with iOS 17. It's actually available on the iPad as well. You do have to speak 150 phrases to train a model of your voice, and then it's only available on that local device. You can see here, I actually haven't trained it on the iPad. I did it on my iPhone. To be honest, it sounds okay, but if you wanted to train a personal voice, this way when you speak text, it can actually speak it in your voice. You can do that here. All right, going back to accessibility and going to touch, tap to wake is a setting you can turn on or off. So when my iPad is off like this, you can just tap the screen and it'll wake it. It's still locked. And because touch ID, I can just tap it here and then it'll unlock the iPad. But if you prefer not that tap to wake, you can turn that off and now it won't tap. I have to click, hold the button and now it unlocks. Now let's go to some Apple Pencil settings. Number 24, a helpful setting here is only draw with Apple Pencil. If you enable this, or let's go to Freeform. And now I can draw with the Apple Pencil, but I can't do any kind of scrolling or anything. I have to use my fingers for that. But then it also won't register my fingers for input. So if you want that kind of separation between the pencil and your fingers for scrolling and writing, you can toggle this on. Number 25, Scribble is a feature where you can write with the pencil and your iPad will make it into text, even in fields like an address bar in Safari. Let's say I wanted to go to this website, beard.fm. If I start writing near the cursor, do a URL, a search term, whatever I would like, and, it'll, and then it'll change it just into regular text. Because I use my Apple Pencil a lot for editing podcasts, I found it accidentally started scribbling text that I didn't intend to, so I actually turn it off here. At the bottom of the Apple Pencil settings, you also have corner swipe controls like screenshot and quick note. So if you wanna turn it off swiping with your finger, but enable these with your pencil, you can do that. This way a swipe from the corner will do a screenshot rather than a swipe with a finger. And you can change the function screenshot or quick note for each corner with pencil. All right, we're in the home stretch. Number 27, go to the notifications tab in settings and you'll see here screen sharing. This means if you're ever going to mirror your display, I think this is especially helpful because a lot of times we share iPad screens to a TV, maybe you're in a meeting, you can turn off all notifications when you're sharing to a screen. Probably helpful so your personal texts are not viewable by everyone in the meeting. So toggle off allow notifications so when you're sharing your screen, everything's still private. Number 28, the control center on iPad is really powerful. And there's a couple settings I like to keep in there like text size. And if you have a magic keyboard, like with an iPad Air or iPad Pro, you can also put keyboard brightness in the control center. Since there's no function row on the Magic Keyboard, this is really helpful for adjusting it. But when it comes to text size, one of the reasons I like keeping it in the control center is I can swipe down, hit the text size, I can adjust it just for a specific app like Threads, maybe I wanna bump that to 110%, or I can do all apps. So if you don't wanna change the text size across your entire device, having it in the control center makes it easy to just specify a specific app text size, and then I can make the text really big in threads, but it will stay normal size everywhere else. Number 29, it was either with iPad OS 16 or 17, you can actually enable low power mode for the battery on iPad. So if you're running low on battery or you wanna automate this with shortcuts, you can enable low power mode here. But if you want some really helpful automations when it comes to battery life and low power mode, I'll link one of my videos up here and down in the description. I walk through 10 battery automations and shortcuts that I think you'll find pretty helpful. And lastly, number 30, if you get Apple Care like I do, especially with my kids' iPads, you can check the status of your Apple Care by going to general and then Apple Care and Warranty, and you can see the Apple Care status of all the devices signed into your iCloud account. You can see what's covered, the next date of renewal, which will let you know if it's either monthly or annually. And you can even manage your Apple Care Plus plan right here on your iPad. If you wanted to switch it, maybe from that annual to a monthly or renew it, I can actually adjust all of my plans throughout my iCloud account right here. And those are 30 settings for your iPad. If you wanna see that battery automations and shortcuts video, I'll link it right up here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you go, hit that like button. If I missed any settings that you feel are really important, leave a comment below this video. I'd love to cover it in future videos or what other Apple devices you'd like to see these setting videos for. And I'll link another video right here that YouTube thinks you'd really enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.